Hey everyone, Stefan from Dryfire Ninja here. Thanks for watching. In this video, I wanted to make a quick introduction to a dry fire and how to get the most out of it. Let's say you're using Glock, which doesn't have a trigger return spring, and uh, I definitely recommend in your dry fire session to have this ability uh, of uh, repeat trigger press. So with a Glock, if you press the trigger uh, with no ammunition, it just goes dead, stays to the rear. And what you can use is uh, use a piece of straw or a zip tie to put inside of your uh, slide and not allow the slide to go fully into battery when you close it. So it's going to look like this. The sides are going to be a little bit closer to you when you hold it, but it's not, it's not really a big deal. But that will give you repeat trigger press and this is really what you want for a dry fire. And with the zip tie you can just put it into the grip. That just gives you a nice training firearm. I recommend uh, using some wood enhancers if you can in dry fire to kind of create this pattern that every time you dry fire you actually injure yourself. This way uh, you're gonna dry fire often and uh, th that's the trick uh, to actually be productive with it is do it every day in the morning and in the, in the evening I would say at least 15 minutes and what I use, I just drink coffee and I uh, listen to music while dry fire looking at uh, cool looking targets and uh, I try to use different stages, different days, uh, so it doesn't get boring. Uh, so with the Glock, uh, to begin in dry fire, I recommend don't start uh, from the holster. Uh, it's a different technique, uh, definitely something you can improve in dry fire, but because when you just start drawing from a holster, your grip is going to be different from draw to draw. What I recommend is to just work from high compressed ready and uh, establish your grip and just work on your fundamentals. So transitions, side picture, follow through, trigger finger isolation. So let's say we have a stage like a GSSF, 5 to Glock. What we want to do is put our strong hand in the perfect grip position, maybe even do some one-handed dry fire that is actually very good for your accuracy so here what we want to do let's say we start with a strong hand shooting right as high as possible middle finger against the trigger guard uh, web of your hand against the beaver tail if you have it or that area it's okay to actually have a little bit of a slight bite um, most people don't though so you provide pressure with your strong hand from front to back and when you're actually uh, shooting targets one thing I found that helps me to keep the front side from moving is engage my thumb and kind of think of the trigger press movement as not just this but more like like I'm trying to catch a fly or take something really small with my index and uh, thumb. And that uh, gives me ability to reduce the movement in my sights a lot. So then I can do the same thing with a support hand. Again, engage your thumb against the frame, kind of move your index finger pad towards your thumb. Watch the sights. Don't let the sights move too much. Then again with the two hands. Once you're comfortable with uh, trigger press not affecting your sights much, it means you're isolating your trigger finger from your grip. You don't want to change uh, a single pound of torque, single pound of force in your grip while you actually engaging and disengage your trigger finger. So you want to isolate uh, all fingers from the index. That's never gonna happen really, but you can decrease the amount of force actually applied to other fingers with practice. So once you're good with that, you can start working on your index. And by index, from this position, how we wanna start is tuck your elbows close to your rib cage, uh, kinda have horizontal or slightly lower angle. Your strong hand, I recommend starting already holding uh, the grip hard enough as you're already shooting. With your left hand though, establish the grip, look at the target, 
with the finger on the trigger, remove the finger of the trigger, come into your ready position, and relax your left hand a little bit. Then on the beep, or when you decide to actually start the exercise, immediately push yourself into the shooting stance, everything. So your grip, your uh, punch out into the target, maybe your head or uh, neck flexed, the uh, weight on the balls of your feet, slightly forward, everything just started. So basically you were ready and now you're engaged. Ready, engage. This way you establishing a natural index that will allow you later uh, to improve your draw speed because if you know how to index immediately where you want to aim from here, you will be able to do it from the draw when you learn when you will learn how to actually get the same exact grip from the same exact position on the draw. So you start. Notice how I slow down moving from this target to this target is because on this one I really want a perfect side picture. This is something you will learn in uh, live fire. Start very slow in live fire, just get your hits and then start speeding up on different distances and learn how much of a side picture misalignment is uh, acceptable for alpha hits on uh, different distances. For me at five yards it was pretty much point shoot because my index is already kind of developed and if I just punch it out uh, the front side is going to be somewhere in the alpha zone and then it's going to look something like so this is the front side and the rear side can be actually like this, like this, like this, like this. It's not enough of a distance to have my misalignment uh, actually affect the hit that's going to be alphas. Then at 15 yard line I want to recover my side picture at least partially in transition so I would say acceptable is again front side is where I want to hit and then uh, rear side is somewhere like around this region so um, probably not more than a full light side uh, light on the left or right side misalignment so it's going to be there but it can rattle a little bit and on the 25 yard line I want the absolute perfect side picture and slightly slower, more smoother uh, trigger press to make sure that I'm not introducing uh, any movement uh, to the firearm, to the barrel during the shot. And basically this is something that you can train for quite a while. You just stand here, you punch out, you get your targets and you try to call your hits. What is calling your hit? It's uh, like you're making a real fast instant photo of your sights and the target and you analyze it like a second or half a second later uh, to understand where uh, your hit would have been if it was uh, an actual shot. Uh, this is something again you need to have live fire to learn how much misalignment will affect the point of aim point of impact shift but if you have a very misaligned sights or if your front side is not an alpha, it's guaranteed that it's not going to be an alpha hit. So uh, let's say you were just transitioning a bit too fast and you moved kind of like alpha, alpha and then boom, shot here. Your front side was here and your rear side was more or less aligned. It's probably going to be a delta. And with experience, uh, you will be able to uh, have the have this ability to make these photos and call your shots faster and more reliable. I think this is it for Dry Fire 101. Tell me what you think in comments. Uh, what other questions you might have for Dry Fire 102? This was Stefan. Thanks for watching.